What is going on traders? Welcome back to the Traveling Traders. So today I'm gonna to go over the stock market and do our regular stock market analysis. I'll be doing analysis on the S&P 500 and I'll show you the top seven stocks that I'm watching right now to give us some idea of what stocks we can buy now, what stocks we can buy today. And look, if you get anything out of this video, please go ahead and leave it a thumbs up. And we're gonna do something a little bit different with the comment section. I thought we'd have a little bit of fun and it gives me an opportunity to give back to you guys for watching. So during the first week of every month, I want you to leave a random play in the comment section whether it's an options play or a stock play tell me what stock to buy or what option to, to get into and i have a webull account set up for this with about a thousand dollars in there and i'm gonna pick a comment at random from one of the videos this week and enter into that play and then by the end of the month if that play made any proceeds i will give that entire amount to whoever's comment i picked so i will give you the profits from that trade so for instance if we enter a trade with a thousand dollars and it makes 20% and you know the profit is 200 bucks that comment that I picked for that trade I will give you the 200 bucks so sign up to Weeble below you get two free stocks when you sign up and leave a comment in the comment section with your play I'll pick it at random and I'll just enter it with my Weeble account so by the end of this week I will have picked that random comment and entered that play and by the end of the month if there's any proceeds I don't care how much the, the profit is it could be 10% it could be a thousand percent I'll just give it to that user all right so let us take a look at the market today an interesting day in the market. The s and is up 0.3%, same as the Dow Jones. NASDAQ is up about 0.6%, so double that. And it's really interesting because some of the stocks that are up are, are retail stocks for stores that aren't even fully open. Lululemon making all-time highs. And as you know, if you follow the trade alerts, sign up if you want access to the trade alerts below where I send out all of my plays. This is actually a stock that, that we've held since mid-April. And it's up 54% for us right now. And for some reason, Lululemon is just at all time highs, even though the stores aren't open. And not only were we dealing with the pandemic, obviously, and the fact that, you know, all businesses were closed, but now we're dealing with the protests across the country and they are having residual effects on retail, as you know, if you've been following the news. But yet retail continues to pump higher. If you look at, at Nike, I mean, Nike is just a few dollars away from all time highs. This is one that we hold as well, which I bought in uh, during the week of the stimulus around March 23rd and we're up 57% on Nike. So an interesting day in that one of the sectors that's pushing up today is is retail and you would have expected at least to see some sort of drawdown in, in retail. Now taking a look at the SPY, as I said uh, in my previous updates that if we cross this 200 day moving average and the $300 psychological level that's going to bring in a wave of FOMO buyers, right? People that feel like they missed out on the bottom and you know they they, they want to take advantage of, of any sort of rally at, when we were at the bottom you know all across the news we were told hey don't buy here you know the, the market's going to look way worse we might be in for a recession and maybe that is true in the future but you know so far the, the market has rallied and we're about 10 percent away from all-time highs on the spy which is unreal now i do think we're due for some sort of correction and the most plausible level like i said before is this range here because this is the most time that we spent trading sideways in right so so there is a lot of support for the spy or the market being at this level here so if we do see a correction I don't, again, I'm on record saying that that I don't think we will visit these these lows, but it is very plausible that we fall back in this range. So that between like around 270 and 295 on the SPY. However, we do have this 0.786 FIB level here at around $313. You see a lot of resistance here as well, going back to early March. So whether we see a correction first or hit this 313 level first, we're not fortune tellers. I don't know. So far, everything looks bullish. So I would lean towards hitting that 313 level first before seeing a correction. It really stems on how the reopenings go, how the trade deal with China is going, how the tensions with China, whether those tensions flare up or not. It seemed like the speech that Trump gave last week was pretty toothless. It was very mild. And I think that was the intention, right? Not to, to cause a, a panic in the markets. So that is my outlook on the SPY. We ended up buying the bottom on a, a lot of stocks. And, you know, that was unintentional. It's not like we were bottom finding. But anytime we get, you know, discounts, major discounts on blue chip stocks like Microsoft, Nike, etc., I'm going to start dollar cost averaging into those stocks. And I'm not really going to wait for 
CNBC or whatever it is, MSNBC to, to, to tell us when the bottom is. All right, a couple more plays before we get into the top seven stocks to watch right now. Tesla pushing higher in the 880 range. This is likely due to a sympathy play off the back of a successful SpaceX launch, which happened over the weekend. We got a pretty good price on Tesla put options which we sold and we are now up 50 percent on those tesla put options that actually expire june 19th we could close it out for profit today or hold out for longer again i sent this out in the trade alert zoom absolutely murdering it it's above 200 dollars now if you take a look at zoom you'll see that it, it retested the 50 moving average where we bought back in and now it's it's just gone absolutely parabolic. 14% today, it's above $205. It's reporting earnings this week, which is one of the reasons that it's going up. We see this a lot where as opposed to the earnings being a binary event and the stock actually rallying on earnings, we see a lot of these tech stocks rally before earnings. So Zoom is reporting earnings after close on Tuesday, which is tomorrow. Now, I wouldn't recommend just buying Zoom on the spot here. I would buy Zoom maybe at a, at a retrace if it goes back down to the 21 EMA or goes back down to the 50 EMA for sure. And as you can see, that it, it does make a habit of retesting these moving averages. And it looks to be a very lucrative strategy strategy going you know all the way back to January of this year every time it hits a moving average whether it's a 50 moving average or the 21 EMA you can buy back in zoom for for the swing so I definitely wouldn't buy it, this tall green candle here if you're not already in zoom all right let's go over the top seven stocks to buy now or at least ones to watch there is a great opportunity on SPG this is an alert that I already sent out Simon Property Group Inc this is a real estate stock, but more specifically, it's related to commercial real estate in the mall sector. So SPG has a lot of malls in its holdings and it's up 5% today, but it's still within this range within the, the pandemic low. It's around $61 now, but SPG's normal range, if you look at, at how long it's traded sideways, it's normal range is between you know, 140 and over 200 bucks. Like look how long this sideways ranges for SPG it goes all the way back to back to 2012 that it trades in this range. And as more malls open up, I mean, the stock is just ripe for a blast off when the economy fully reopens. And it, it's relatively cheap right now compared to what it normally trades at, at least for the last eight years. And if you take a look at SPG's financials, you'll see here it's net income. 1.8 billion, 1.9 billion, 2.4 billion, 2.1 billion, 1.9 billion. So it's a consistently profitable company. Looking at the the cash flows, you'll see that that it always has cash on hand. The free cash flows always hovering around between 2.5 and 3 billion dollars. All right, the next one we're going to look at is Virtue Financial. This is a very bullish uh, pattern here on on the chart on the daily chart but if you take a look it's forming a it has formed a double bottom pattern here and you have hidden bullish divergence between the rsi here and between the the stock price itself as you can see here now this would be more of a long-term hold i'm definitely not looking to swing uh virtue financial here but i am looking for for it to be above the 30 dollar mark within the midterm so giving it a few months to hit there but i would definitely add this to my portfolio and we also see the golden cross between the 50-day moving average in the 200 here. All right, the next one we're going to look at is Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat is one that we jumped in at the retest of the 21 EMA here, this white line. Now, last week it went up about 6% and today it's up another 6%. And a good sign on Beyond Meat is it crossed resistance, retested it as support, fell below, but then gapped back up really quickly. And it, it's forming this what's called an Adam and Eve pattern here. And this is where you see basically a rounding bottom and <clears throat> and a uh, a sharp valley here now usually you see it the other way around where you have the valley first and then the rounding bottom but it doesn't really matter this pattern is considered a very bullish pattern and especially if we break out i can definitely see beyond meat being 200 dollars and above it has a huge portion of the market share it doesn't really have any major competitors all right the next stock we'll look at is ewz ewz is an etf that contains that that's basically comprised of large and mid cap sized Brazilian companies. So it's, it's essentially an ETF that tracks a Brazilian market. The reason that I'm gung ho about this is because obviously of what's going on with Brazil and the pandemic. However, you could expect a sharp rebound in Brazil. 
one of the largest countries in the world, one of the largest economies in the world. And EWZ is pretty consistent going all the way back to 2018, trading in this, you know, $36 to $45 range. Currently we're at 27 bucks <clears throat> and it is forming this uh, double bottom here that, that we see on, on other stocks. And it has broken out of resistance from that double bottom. But we added EWZ when I sent it out in the trade alerts to our portfolio last week. It gapped up last week and it's currently up a, a few percentage points today. But I do have a strong long-term outlook for EWZ. All right, the next one that I'm bullish on for the long-term IIPR, this is Innovative Industrial Properties. So as you could tell by the name, it probably has to do with real estate, but more specifically, what IIPR deals in, if you look at its summary here, it's a self-advised Maryland corporation focused on the acquisition, ownership, and management of specialized properties leased to experienced state licensed operators for the regulated medical use cannabis facilities. So it is specifically targeted, it's specifically targeting the cannabis industry, acquiring and managing properties or facilities for cannabis growth. And as small as the company is currently, if you take a look at their financials, they're actually poised for, for growth. I mean, they're somehow they have a, a net income already. So they're making around $23 million in, in net income, 23.4. And if you take a look at their, their free cash flows, they have about, you know, $45 million in cash flows on hand. And it's no secret. I mean, we are moving towards uh, legalization, whether that's at the federal level or more states or all states go ahead and legalize cannabis. It's only a matter of time. So getting in a company not only involved in cannabis itself, but also in the sp specifically with the uh, the real estate aspect of the cannabis industry. All right, the next talk we'll look at is Zscaler. Zscaler is one that we bought last week after this earnings gap up, you see this breakaway gap here. And usually, you know, I don't FOMO into stocks. But when I see an earnings gap up like this, and you know, it breaks all time highs, it definitely piques my interest because this, if you see this trend on Wall Street, you see this with something like PayPal, where there's an earnings gap up that continue that has the ability to push momentum even higher. So it's not like, you know, the stock was rallying stead steadily and we FOMO'd at the high. But when you see this earnings, earnings gap up, and especially if the short interest is relatively high, that could also enforce a short squeeze on, on a violent move up. So, but aside from that, Zscaler is one that I would definitely watch. It's a relatively new company, only around for a couple of years, but making a lot of noise recently. And it's a very fast growing cloud security company that has already started beating earnings. You see the revenue jump 40% during the, the last earnings report, which was just last week. And its outlook is very bullish. So on Zscaler, I would wait for a retracement if you're not already if you're not already in it, but it's a stock that has a lot of growth potential. All right. And the seventh stock on my watch list, a stock that I'm looking to buy, actually, this is one that, that I did own earlier, ended up selling for profits and didn't buy back in. However, I'm looking to buy back in here because CVS is just looking really bullish. Again, we see this Adam and Eve pattern on the, on the technical charts. So you have the, the rounding bottom, excuse the, the the messy way in which I draw this, but you have the, the rounding bottom followed by the uh, the sharp peak here. And we are about 16% from just the highs that we saw this year, let alone all-time highs, which are much higher than that. And CVS had acquired Aetna, which is a medical insurance company, one of the, the largest medical insurance companies. And it definitely benefited from the pandemic because it was one of the only essential stores that were open and it saw its sales go through the roof. Sales of sanitizers, prescription medication, etc. And that acquisition of Aetna, as I just described, really poises it for, for long-term growth. And it, it pays, it has a dividend yield of about 3%. And its payout ratio is around 36% as well, which means that it is likely to, to be able to continue paying that dividend for the long term. And then I'll give you a couple of bonus ones here. American Tower Corporation. This is one that we opened up an Iron Condor options play on. And it is up about 2.8% today. But this is essentially a 5G Tower Corporation. And it is looking super bullish here already in, in all-time high terror. Territories. I wouldn't necessarily buy this here. I would wait for a retracement of at least to, to one of the, the major moving averages before jumping in. But AMT looking very bullish here for the long term. Even if you look at its stock chart, you know, really since 2002 you can see that it's just been a steady growth up. Silver is just looking super bullish as well. We're up 40% on silver. Again, another trade alert that I sent out 
really a long time ago when silver was back at around $12. It is now at 17 bucks, And it looks like it, it's coming up on short-term resistance. But if you look at it at the weekly chart, silver has a lot more profit potential to go, which is one of the reasons that I picked it over gold, over GLD. I, I invested a lot heavier in silver than gold, not because I think silver is better in, in for, for any reason, but because the chart offered a lot more growth potential than gold did. Gold was already nearing uh, you know, all time highs, but silver's profit potential was insane. SLV hit a high of almost $50 back in 2011. And we're already up 40%. And we're very far away from $50. We're at 17 right now. And lastly, I'm continuing continuing to monitor uh, DraftKings. Now, I don't like buying stocks, uh, you know, in IPO phases, because it, it really is a mixed bag. I think it's a 50 50 shot. Sometimes you see, you know, stocks boom past their IPO stage, sometimes you see them tank and DraftKings with the anticipation of the reopening of sports is up now to, to $43. And it looks like it just keeps going up. But I'm definitely going to be monitoring DraftKings for a more optimal entry. Currently, I, I don't like buying into things that are just rallying with no end in sight. I feel like I don't have a good gauge from, from which to enter. So I will wait for it to do some more price discovery, see where it retraces to, where it finds support. But I'm definitely watching DraftKings. All right, that is it for this video. Go ahead and sign up if you want access to the trade alerts. If you want one-on-one -on -one training, especially with regards to options, because I know that can be very difficult, sign up. It's June 1st. And I only take a handful of people every month. So if there are still spots left, then go ahead and grab one of those if you want. They do go really quickly. Again, leave it a thumbs up if you got anything out of this video and leave it in the comment section below what play you want me to do. And I'll pick a random comment from one of the videos this week and I will enter that play with that Webull account that I set up. And whichever pick that I play, if it's profitable by the end of the month, I will give those proceeds to the user whose play I picked. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, stay safe out there traders, peace.